<sighs> there we go. Hey, why does it say Lester and Jamie? Hey, folks, that was from, that's old. I have to fix that. Y'all give me one moment here. I think Jamie's sabotaging me. There. <laughs> I believe I'm being sabotaged. Uh, Jamie is from a remote location and she's sabotaging my life. I asked her to moderate just to keep all the pee pats away. And instead, she's going to try to start taking over and everything. I'm kidding. Jamie's actually right here. I'm like, how are you going to talk bad about me right now? I can't you? talk bad about her. She's right over there working. Jamie and I are both here, even though it's my life. The reason I said that is because right when I went live, it says Lester and Jamie here. And I'm thinking, Lester and Jamie here? Anyway, it's good to see you all. And thank you for joining me on a Friday afternoon. It's uh, It's been a busy morning for, for me. Um, we gave both Jake and Bennett a couple of days off. They got They got live happening. They got live happening. And I'm thinking, who lets life happen when you when you run a farm? Life cannot happen. This is life. This is life. Am I not? Am I right about that? And who can take time off? I was uh, I was making a video this morning. Actually, Jamie, you don't know much about this, but um, and guys, I'm talking to Jamie, but I promise you, she's working. She doesn't hear a thing that I say. Jamie is the kind of person who can mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and never look up. But um, we, uh, we were left a really sweet gift, if you want to call it that, from either Jake or Ben. I don't know who, so I'm not going to say any names. I will not say any specific names. But um, one of the fellas was doing a job using the side-by-side. -side, and they had um, a five-gallon box of three inch screws screws you know screws that you use to put things together lumber along with all of my tools now for some reason they had set that box of screws in front of the side by side on the seat there where you drive and all of the tools in the back end okay fine you know, you get to work and you're doing jobs. You just, you get to moving and you just put things places. However, at some point in all of the chores that we use the side-by-side -side for, that box of screws fell over. It flipped over into the seat. Half of those screws fall down to the floorboard. The other half fall back behind the seat. And many of those screws fell out all across the ground. When I came back from Longhorn Lester's yesterday and got ready to do the afternoon chores, I saw that there were screws everywhere, like all over the ground. And Jamie heard my screams. I'm sure she could hear my screams. So um, it was getting late and I didn't have time to pick up all the screws at that point. Jake is throwing money and he's saying it was Bennett. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hold on a second. Jake is trying to hold on. Jake is trying to give me money <laughs> to blame Bennett. It was Bennett. I do not drive the side by side. Jamie. Well, that's one way, Jake, to throw throw shade. Here I was not saying any names. And all of a sudden you're going to say, nope, it was Bennett. And he put it in all caps. I don't drive the side by side. Uh, guys, don't anyone else give money except for Jake. Jake, you can keep sending money all you want to because I did not have time to pick up all the screws last night that were spilt all across the ground, all across the garage. Um, and who knows where that side by side went with screws just falling out. But um, I had to go out this morning and in a part of my chores this morning was to take the magnet and walk along anywhere that we drive just walk along anywhere that we drive 
trying to pick up any screw that I could possibly find because, you know, the screws will fall into the ground. They'll get stuck in the rocks and they'll, they'll and they'll end up in your tire. I kid you not. Nine times out of ten. Oh, no. Someone says, can we just title this when Lester gets screwed? Annette? Annette, is that how it is that how I is that how I'm coming across? Am I coming across as that kind of a guy? <laughs> Jamie thinks that's very clever, Annette. But what a clever title when Lester gets screwed. So it's not Lester necessarily. It's every tire on every the Humvee, Jamie's Jamie's car, my truck, the tractor. The four wheelers, the side by side, the trailers. God. So I have a great thought, actually. Jamie has a thought. Are you going to chime in from across the room yeah, or are you yeah. going to walk over and join yeah, me no, here? No. I'm, I have to, I'm getting ready to do some work. Jamie has to work, so she's going to chime you in on her thought. Magnet things that you get, like they have like the wheelie thing, and it's like a bar with a magnet. Yeah. We're going to get them for everyone, and we're going to have a little race and a little game of who can collect the most. That's how we're going to fix it. Jamie Starting wants to get game. the little rolly magnet stick. A lot of you guys may know about those. And we will have the boys, when they when they all come back from their day off and their weekend getaways, have them come back and uh, have a challenge to see who can collect more screws that are laying out in the pastures and down the driveway. And Oh, yeah, metal detector. No, there's something better than a metal detector, guys. There really is a really neat, heavy, heavy, heavy metal uh, magnet that uh, we have several of them that go onto the end of a, of a wand like a broomstick. And you just kind of walk along and you cast those right off the ground so far. And you have all kinds of stuff that'll pop up and stick to them. And so we have a couple of those. I've already used one this morning just to make sure I didn't back up over anything. And I also, yeah, so thank you, Jake, for telling telling Ben, for telling me who it was. And uh, boy, did he just call Ben out on that one. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, Jake, I was being, I was doing the right thing by not saying any names. I was not saying any names. And if Jake didn't just call Ben out on that one. Anyway, um, I will not say what Jake and Ben are up to today because that's their personal life. And I hope that they both have a great time at what they're doing and uh, they will check in with Uncle Lester. And if they have any questions or they need any advice, because I'm really good at stuff like that, they can always just text or call or even FaceTime. Mm -hmm. And I can be a big help. Trust me. Um, Donna says, Jake just didn't want to be the one to be blamed. Probably as usual. No, you can't blame Jake for anything, y'all. It's hard to blame. You can. There's a couple of people around here you can never blame for anything. You can't. You just cannot blame them. You can never blame my dad, Paul Paul. You can never blame my dad for anything. As a matter of fact, the most recent example about that is when Moses and one of his sweet little heifers came through my fence they came through my fence came up into my barn area and i made a video and i called it pawpaw's problem because this is the first time in five years that any of my dad's cows have come over onto my side and uh i've always taken full responsibility whenever tex or any of my cows cj moo when any of my cows get out and go to someone else's pasture, that immediately becomes the fault of the owner of that particular animal. Are you leaving? I'm sorry. Jamie's going to have to go do a Zoom, so she's leaving. So no one else, no more shout outs to Jamie. She's not here. Um, I'll try to talk semi-quiet as well. So you can never blame Paw Paw because in that video, I called it a Paw Paw problem. And I says, finally, for once in five years, it's not my cows going over to my dad's side of the property. It's uh, my dad's cows coming over onto my side of the property. So this is, in fact, a Paw Paw problem. Duh, it's a Paw Paw problem. But I've learned, I've learned real fast that on, uh, on a video, you cannot ever say anything is a Paw Paw problem. Because, in fact, there were probably 200 or more people 
who said that it should be it should be Lester who should go over there and fix those fences. And I'm thinking, my God, if I've not tried to tack up and fix fences for the last five years around here, replacing the entire 15 acres around my property <laughs> and uh, all with and, and never, never, not once. This is how many times my dad drove by to see can he help. This is how many times my dad drove. Those are zeros. That's double zeros. That's how many times my dad, your beloved Papa, drove by to ask if it could be of any help. Not financial help. Not could I help you pull the wire? Can I help you stretch the wire? Can I help you staple the wire? Can I help you? Can I just sit here and drink a beer and talk to you while you work? Zero times. But uh, no, so I've fixed all that fence. Uh, to keep my cows in. It was a it was a work in progress and it took a long time to do it, but it was finally completed. And I was so proud that there towards the end, I would say for the last several months, we had a small gate issue that Tex was able to get through. But as far as coming through fencing, my cows didn't get out of any any fencing because we did it right. We did it right. And then, uh, but there were a lot of folks who were saying, shame on you, Lester, shame on you, shame on you for not fixing that fence for your dad, for not fixing that fence for your dad. And so, yeah, so I realized on that day that you can't say anything uh, derogatory or negative towards Papa because it's going to come back to slap you in the face. And I've also known for quite a while, you can't say anything about Jake. You cannot say anything about Jake, no matter how much anxiety, no matter how many pills I have to start popping whenever Jake's around, it doesn't matter. You can't mention it. You cannot mention it because if you mention anything about Jake, oh my God, if I thought that Pawpaw had a devout following, oh, who follow him around and and whatever, uh, boy, if I didn't learn the hard way that Jake has just as many a following, but uh, I probably shouldn't say anything else about that because I'm afraid if I do, I'm going to end up making someone angry. But uh, it's funny the way people will attach to their guy. And I guess you call that loyalty. I guess you call that loyalty. So I guess that's a good thing. Everyone always says that the, the number one thing they want out of their partner, more than good looks, more than being great in the bed, or more than anything else, is they just want loyalty. Because loyalty is a really hard thing to come by these days. And um, so, yeah, you can't say a word about Jake or Paw Paul. And you're going to have to hear about it from a lot of people. So fine. Jake says it was Bennett. And as of now, Bennett has no social media page. So I think that we're pretty safe in just blaming Bennett. But uh, it did not change the fact that the entire morning, I've been out there in the heat picking up screws off the ground, off the sidewalk, down the driveway. Jake is like a sweet piece of chocolate candy. Anyway, I've always said that I will share with you all the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so this morning was pretty darn ugly. So, yeah, there's a video about that, which is funny. And I'm sure Jake will, Jake's people will come to his defense in that video as well. <laughs> but Jake, I hope that Jake knows and that uh, he can keep sending $5 all he wants to. But $5 is not going to patch a hole in a tractor tire and five dollars is not going to patch a hole in that humvee have you guys heard that there's a lot of people in certain parts of the country that are going around slashing tires of larger vehicles it's all part of their quest to do what's right for the environment and Saint Jake. <laughs> yeah, that would be Saint Jake. I do count my blessings. Anita, where's Anita? Come here, Anita. Anita Andrews sent me an email 
And she says, Lester, I am so sorry for what I've done wrong because I did not reply to her email. And Anita, listen to me. I got your email, but I do not always have time to reply to those emails. You know, um, we used to, um, several months back, we had Sister Kim, that's my sister, who's not of the sisterhood. No. Sister Kim is what we call her. She's my sister. And we had her replying in, uh, to all of the emails. Because, in fact, you do get several hundred emails a day. Some are a lot of folks asking questions, which is great. And many are guys giving suggestions, which are awesome. Some are from people offering animals who need rescue or they're trying to surrender an animal that they can no longer take care of, which we appreciate you trying to do the right thing for your animals. Some are people just want to be mean who getting on to me for something or another or getting on to Jamie for what she wears or getting on to me for what I say or something. Then, you know, there's business emails, obviously, but we uh, the I'm a survivor email was so busy that we were employing Kim, my sister Kim, to answer and reply to emails. And a lot of times Kim would do that as herself. But Kim began to realize that there were people who did not want to talk to Kim. They wanted to talk to Lester or Jamie. So Kim would flag those emails and I would try to get to them when I was in the bath there in the late afternoons. But it got to be a little bit overwhelming. There were so many. So I says, Kim, just if you know the answer to a question, just answer it as Lester. So if Sister Kim didn't begin to dummy down how she talks, Sister Kim is a very well-spoken woman, and Sister Kim is never short of words. Kim has a way of finding the right way, the diplomatic way to say anything, and Kim would do that. But once I told her to pretend to be me, talk like me, Kim, man, she came down with some... Whew, Kim began to dummy down her emails to where y'all thought it was me saying stuff. <laughs> and uh, in saying so, Anita, Kim would answer every email. Poor Kim would get onto her computer sometimes and in the afternoons, the evenings, and she would make sure that she would reply to every email before she went to bed. And some days are worse than others, but uh, she would, she would apply to every email. Well, since then, Sister Kim has started her own page, which means that Kim is also doing making her own content. And so she no longer works for I'm a Survivor. She works for herself. She works for you all. And so now Jamie and I are forced to do, to do our own emails, which are fine. But we're not as good as Kim because we're also, you know, Jamie works a full-time job. She's over there working it right now. I'm off, you know, from my bus run for the summer. And so my day consists of waking up and doing farm chores here at I'm a Survivor and then heading over to Longhorn Lester's. And then uh, when I get back, I spend my afternoons building my emails, getting things uploaded uh, my emails, uh, building my videos, getting things uploaded and, and, and stuff. And saying so, to make a long story short, Anita sent me a video, uh, an email. Shh. I have to stop reading all these comments because you guys are throwing me off of my game. Uh, Anita sent me an email begging forgiveness of whatever she'd done to offend us because her last couple of emails had gone unanswered. And so, Anita, it, they haven't gone unread. I promise you that. Your emails are getting read. But we do, we have, uh, we have struggled in trying to be as responsive as what we used to be when it comes to replying to emails and comments and, and other things. Um, I am a reader. You already know this. I don't mean to go off on that tangent again, but I read. I read everything. I can't help but read, but um, I um, don't always have time to reply. So just Anita, you haven't done anything wrong. You've not offended anybody, but we just do not have a lot of time. But yes, count your blessings. Count them one by one, like the song says. 
All right. Whew. That took, I don't even know where the timer is at. I don't know how much time I've already spent kind of catching everybody up on things. Don't blame us, Lester. It's your lack of multitasking. <laughs> Thank you, Belinda. Thank you for being so understanding to my lack of multitasking. And uh, I will not argue with you on that one. I will say that I am as busy now as I have ever been in my life. And Belinda, what you should say is thank you, Lester, for despite being as busy as you are, you're still able to bring us two videos every single day. You've not skipped a beat in three or four years of making free videos for us to enjoy. And if you don't enjoy the videos, at least you can get a good gripe out and you can get yourself all worked up so mad at Lester for what he did in this latest video. Funny story about videos and about how fickle people can be is the fact of I made a video. Okay, so you know what? I haven't been feeling real well. I don't, I haven't talked about it. I don't want to talk about it, but I haven't been feeling a hundred percent. And so one day it was time for afternoon feed up and I just didn't feel real well. I knew I had, you know, work and life goes on. You already know that life goes on. You can't take time to be sick. Not, not everybody can afford to take time to be sick. So I went out to make a, a, an afternoon video during feed up. And I said, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm just going to make a video and try to capture the scenes, the sunset, the animals at their greatness in their glory. And I'm going to save any commentary. I'm just going to just not talk. I'm just not going to talk. I'm just going to video and let the animals and their beauty speak for themselves. And so I built that video thinking that you all were going to call me out for being cheesy and cheap and lazy and a sloth for not giving you any commentary. And yes, there were some folks that did that. There were many people who says, look at Lester, the first time ever he's run out of stuff to say. But there were also more people that appreciated the beauty in that video and the fact that I did not mess it up with words, that I did not mess it up with words. And that ended up being the number one video of the week. We get analytics. You guys know that we get analytics. And if that did not end up being my number one out of all videos that week uh, with views, with the amount of time that you watched it, and which is the, and then of course the number one thing is your audience engagement. Because what we love is engagement. That's what YouTube and Facebook look for. They love when you engage with the video. And how shocked was I to sit here and be, I was preparing myself for a lashing. I was, I was preparing myself for a lashing and come to find out that that's just what you wanted. Instead of hearing Lester get on there and say how hot it is and how dry it is. And every farmer, every farmer, every rancher, everybody that you're watching on the internet, I'm sure we're like a broken record. You're so sick of hearing how hot and how dry uh, and how much our farms are struggling right now, how our babies are just really just, you know, fighting to pull through. And instead, we just took a break from that and I played some music. And I captured some really fine video. And if that, it did not end up being just what a lot of you needed on that particular day. And I appreciate you letting me know that. So... I can't say it was an easy video to make because I'm a talker, y'all. I'm a talker. That's just my nature. I like to talk. I, I don't like to hear myself talk. I feel like I sound like a little weirdo, kind of weird when I hear myself. But I do. I talk. And that's how I guess I've always gotten by is being able to talk myself out of things or talk myself into things. So I'm a talker, okay? <laughs> and uh, 
Anywho, so yeah, that was a neat video. If you've not seen that video yet, I believe it might be playing this afternoon at 2 o'clock on Facebook. Videos normally play first on YouTube, and they come up a little bit later on Facebook. So you have to understand that. Uh, Lester, the man of the hour. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you saying that. Um, anyway, as far as Texas goes, yes, we are still going through this a severe drought. But guys, I watched the news last night and how shocked that I was to see so many states are being flooded and homes are being flooded. Hold on. Christina is at Disneyland watching me. <laughs> Who does that? Christina, I can almost promise you, you're probably stuck in a, in a line that says it's only an hour and a half from this point. And so you're wasting time. So thank you, Christina. But I know what you're up to. I, you know what, though? You could be watching anybody and you choose to watch me. And I really appreciate that, Christina. So that's lovely. I hope you have a wonderful time at Disneyland. I hope the lines are not as long as they have been known to get. But uh, there's, I don't know a person who's gone to Disneyland and has not come back to complain about how long the lines are. And then Disneyland has gotten clever. Now, if you want to spend an extra 30 bucks a person, you can buy the fast pass. And that gives you a faster way to get up into the rides. So now you're passing up in front of all the losers who can't spend the extra money, only to find out that even the fast pass has you waiting in a line so disneyland got you on that one i hope you did not buy the fast pass christina because that's just a ploy for them to make more money out of you <laughs> but i do appreciate you watching so let's get back to a serious topic in the fact that there are places that are flooding who've never seen flooding isn't it crazy how you have historic historic flooding in places and then you have, hold on a second. Lester, you did it. Goofy is waving at you. No lie. I'll send Jamie the pick. <laughs> All right, Christina. You got Goofy waving at me. That's good. That's good, Goofy. How you doing there, Goofy? Uh, Disney. Disney. <laughs> says Dolly. Um, so no, we're going to get back um, to um, there's just so many people. I'm trying to find another comment. There we go. We'll just go with Candy's comment right there. Okay, Christina, you're taking over my life. Christina has officially taken over my life. So um, the have a um, a lot of people were saying here that when they went to Disneyland, they only got to ride two rides the entire day. And so that's crazy. But uh, no, it's historic flooding in some parts of the country. Then you have historic droughts in other parts of the country. And so it's, it's really scary, friends. It's really scary, the world that we live in. And I don't really know exactly, you know, who's who and where you're at and what you're going through. But... We, uh, I think that all we can say is we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. And uh, hold on. What is this over here? This is something we can talk about. Don't enable Jake and Ben. Okay. <laughs> so listen, that wouldn't be me. I, I don't. Don't enable Jake and Ben. I don't really know if you're telling me that or you're telling a lot of the um the thirsty ladies that that's the joke that uh i don't even know if kids even still use that word anymore but when i was teaching school middle school and high school kids they would often refer to a woman as thirsty a girl as thirsty 
whenever she was so just hung up on just this guy or or something that she could just <laughs> see no wrong and um, I sometimes joke with Jake that he has a very thirsty audience I don't mean it in a nasty sexual way but it is a Paul Paul and Jake do have a very thirsty if I can use that word just they just I don't even know how the dictionary translate that word that word I don't know I'm hoping that I'm not saying something that's totally inappropriate but uh if I am I'm sure someone will let me know so the misting fans have been working out really nice for us here I want to say thank you again to the kind people who have reached out and found ways to help keep our babies more comfortable we do put the misting fans we have two that are set out right now i have one that blow across the horses and the donkeys and they really appreciate theirs and then i have a second one that blows across the pigs and the alpaca what's cute is you can even find cornholio on occasion going in front of the misting fans so all of the animals that need it are being misted whenever they feel like it i've never seen moo or Annabelle walk up to the misting fans. They have access. The, the horses are not there the entire day. I leave the fans on the entire day. My routine, and I feel like I'm a broken record by saying this, is I go out every morning and I do my part of the chores, and then I'll turn the fans on and I'll get the misters going. And then I'll normally leave and go to Longhorn Lester's and take care of animals over there until I come back in the late afternoons. And when I turn the fans and the misters back off, I don't want to have the misters running all night when animals are not wanting to, you know, needing to stay cool. But, um, but uh, they are using those misting fans and those are working out great. And we appreciate you guys doing that. I uh, couldn't help but look up how much those things cost. And that was a very expensive gift. I, I hate that you guys did that. And I pray that no one ever, ever, ever spends money on us that you can use for yourself. Uh, Cornholio is doing fine. I'm just going to kind of scan through and talk on a couple of things that I'm seeing are popping up. Annie, as of this morning, still has no baby. And it's getting to the point to where Jamie and I are both doubting ourselves in what we thought we saw those particular days. So I don't know. Um, I will tell you this, Jamie and I would have never invented or created a fake story for, you know, fake news just to make a video. We always try to show you what's going on around the farm, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I swear, we both thought that there was something special happening that particular day. But here we are two or three weeks later and still no baby. So I am. Um, can't help but starting to doubt myself on all of that. I don't know. A lot of people say that they continually watch Annie in every video and they still see what they think is kicking. That's not just a part of her natural body rhythm. And so I, I don't know. I watch her as well, but uh, I mostly go out every morning to, I want to be the first one to see that baby and hold that baby and love that baby and video that baby. And I know that, um, that is uh, every morning I'm just as dejected as what you all are whenever we can't bring you that because I really want to. I really want to. The baby ostriches are doing great. Guys are growing up so fast and uh, here they are at less than three months old and I'm making sure that Jamie's still in her room on Zoom. Thank you, Beth. Why can't everyone be so complimentary? Why can't I have some, so why can't I have the kind of following like Jake and Pawpaw have? Thank you, Beth. I needed to hear that. Sometimes words of encouragement can do things to build people up, y'all. So anyway. Beth, I feel like I'm blushing. And so 
I'm going to get off of that before Jamie comes out of the room. <laughs> but I promise you, Beth, guess what? Someone is going to screenshot that and email Jamie just trying to start drama around our house. Um, so her belly is round. She looks prego. Yeah, I would agree. Her belly does look round. But then, of course, we didn't when we groomed her, we didn't shave off all of that hair around her belly. So it's hard to see exactly what's going on down there. But um we will, uh, we'll, we're going to keep an eye open and we're going to watch out for her and keep her cool, keep her fed, keep her hydrated and do all that we can. And so if that day happens and I can't wait to see and to bring it all to you, and I promise you that will not be a video you'll have to wait for. That will be one of those videos that we're going to jump in and put at the front of the order. So you'll all see it the same day. And then, uh, Cassie is right. Um, people were suggesting that we have someone come out and look at Annie uh, like a vet and uh, let us know if she's in fact pregnant or not. But uh, we've talked about this before and Cassie has listened and paid attention to this, that uh, Annie doesn't like to be touched. And so we feel like by us trying to corner Annie and capture her because that she's going to have to be captured and caught, we'll be doing more stress to her than good. So if she is in fact with baby, then that will happen at some point. And if she's not, at least we're all having a lot of fun watching and all of us staring down at her uterus area and seeing if, um, if in fact we see any kicking or any movement, but uh, yes, all of our fingers are crossed. So keeping fingers crossed. Thank you, Kristen. And that's what we're all doing. So let's move on to a few other comments down the page a little bit. Um, Lester, if you would wear, so I am, uh, it's hard to see her utter. Um, I, unlike the cows where it's just shows, Annie's is all kind of tucked up underneath there pretty far. And we left, uh, we did not shave her under belly, Sam. So you, you really can't see what's going on under there like you could with the cows. And so I remember I gave you that silly uh, utter report, do -do 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 the bag report when it came to Pearl. And you got that bag report probably three weeks leading up to her actually having her calf. But uh, unfortunately, I can't do those bag reports with Annie because I can't see anything under there. And so, anywho, that's what's going on with that. Um uh, mm, Well, I was going to go ahead and continue the live talking about a few other video, a few of, of, the, of your comments. But um, right now, it seems like you guys are all stuck on things that I can't talk about. Um, so I will talk about the baby ostriches. They're all doing great. Um, Jamie made a video yesterday. Carl has something going on under his beak. I think he may have gotten bit by a spider. I really can't tell for a fact because you, you can't handle Carl either. But he has, there's some swelling underneath his beak. His beak comes out, you know, like a, like a cap. And normally it's fairly flat. But right here on the bottom, you see a little bit of a, a, a it looks like a sore. It looks like a boil. If you know what a boil is, it looks like a boil. And the center of that boil is black. And so the closest thing that to me, it looks like would be a spider bite. I've been bitten by a spider once and uh, it did it. It literally, it was like a boil that turned black in the head, in the center. And, you know, back in our day, mom and dad would be squeezing the heck out of all that stuff, trying to get that, the poison out of there. And you can't squeeze Carl's beak. You're not going to catch Carl and squeeze it. It's not a tick. It's a sore and the black spot is the head of that sore so i don't know exactly what happened with carl but we're keeping an eye on it we um, have been reading about antibiotics and how you would administer those to a bird like carl they have some you can put into their water which is hard because they all share the same water you also could do uh, an injection which would be hard because you'd have to catch carl and have someone come and give him that injection 
Um, so we're going to hope that it heals on its own. Um, I'm watching it and Carl's eating fine. He's not being lethargic. He's moving around and doing all that he always does. The babies are being very playful. They're starting to do a lot more running and dancing, spinning around and doing all kinds of cute things. I actually have a long video that will come out that I put the little snippet. I am um, what I'm doing a lot of lately is taking a long video that is, is scheduled to come out in a couple of days and I'll take a snippet of it and I'll make it into a reel. If you guys don't know this, those reels are like little short TikTok type videos. And we've been asked to do more of those. And it's not just this channel that's doing them. I'm, I know that if you watch any of the other farm channels, you'll notice that they're also doing the same things on Facebook because that's what Facebook asks you to do. And we are, in fact, um, blessed that Facebook allows us a platform. And in saying so, we have to accommodate Facebook and what they want from us instead of just long videos or they want short snippets or reels. And so they are putting uh, we are making quite a few reels and I'm just using some of the snippets from my long videos into the reels for two th reasons. Number one, I'm appeasing Facebook, the powers that be kind of see that I'm using reels like what they're suggesting. And number two is giving a lot of you guys kind of a heads up of what's coming your way. So just know if you see the little short 30 second video reel, they spell it R-E-E-L, then just know that that is a part of a larger video that is coming your way very soon. Um, I think the most popular reel that I put out recently that has a million views on it, which is crazy, was the cows doing the stampede. I had taken the, uh, the bigs, Tex and his family, over to the pasture, uh, the brush side of our, of our property at Longhorn Lester's. And they were so excited to be out and about that they began to run and made sort of a stampede. And it was cute watching them because they're just excited and they're, they're running down through there like a herd of buffalo. I don't even know how they didn't fall and get hurt. They didn't trample each other. But the little goats who were who, who saw them coming, <laughs> I, I saw... I saw the fear of the devil in the goat's eyes. All their little eyes got big when those cows came their way and all the goats turned and just hauled ass as fast as they could. And uh, that was really cute. It was a cute reel and, and it was a wonderful video. And I believe by now both platforms have had a chance to see that video. But uh, the reels is not something that we're real big on. As that's not the future of I'm a Survivor or Longhorn Lester's. But it is the future of social media, friends. You need, you need to understand that, that um, times change. And even though you and, you know, you may like long videos the same way that I like long videos. There's a lot of people that would rather watch a hundred short clips, clip, 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 instead of watching one long video. And so you can do that on Facebook now. And Facebook is trying to keep up with the Joneses as far as the YouTube, the Instagram, the TikToks, because they're a business. And so as a business, they have to do what keeps them in the game. And so you can't be mad at Facebook. You really can't be mad at anybody. I hope you certainly can't be mad at I'm a survivor for trying to do what our employer asked us to do. So, you know, that kind of reminds me of something. I used to be a waiter. I used to wait tables at Steak and Ale. This is years and years ago. And what we would do is whenever we would have guests come in, we would always greet them with a glass of water. We'd sit down a beverage napkin that said Steak and Ale, and we'd set a glass of ice water on top. And that was a classy way to greet your guest to acknowledge that we know that you're here. We might be busy with other tables, but here's you some water to sip on. I'll be back to continue the ordering process in a few moments. Well, at some point, Steak and Ale began to notice something. Steak and Ale was realizing that if you give people that glass of water, 
Many times they refuse to order anything else from the bar or they refuse to even order a soft drink or tea or a coffee because you know what? I'm fine with water, which costs nothing. So Steak and Ale, had a, they, they made a policy where we're no longer going to greet our tables with water because it's not making them any money. And they said, instead, go by and just put down the beverage napkin, but not the glass of water. And so I remember how hard it was for me to have to start doing that because I'd already gotten used to from the years of me serving is I'd walk by with glasses of water and set those down for all of the guests. But uh, it was a change that I had to do because it fit the business model of steak and ale. And so for everyone who doesn't like the reels, just know that it's something that we have to do. And so they're not going away. If you're not able to find our long videos, then you're doing it wrong. You have to actually sometimes go to our page and on our page, you'll see our long videos. They're there, guys. We have not, not posted a video in years. So that is one thing that you, have, you can come to understand is going to be there, rain or shine. There's always going to be a video on I'm a Survivor, Facebook, and on YouTube. And there's also always going to be a video on Longhorn Lester's on YouTube. Now, other parts of the um, Morrow Hill gang don't all post on the same consistency. I have talked to them about that. Um, I'm not the I'm not the boss. I'm not. I am not the boss of the video creators here on Morrow Hill. I'm happy that I've given all of those guys a window of opportunity into social media, but I'm not the boss. And so some of the things that I told them, and this means I, everybody, this is from Ellie to Kim to Jake, Bree, my dad, Jamie, uh, whoever else I'm, I'm leaving out. Um, I said, there's a couple of things that you have to do to make sure you don't lose people, but your pages continue to grow. And number one, you have to be consistent. People need consistency. I'm not saying you have to post every single day. You don't. But you have to know, your people have to know that it's Wednesday, it's four o'clock, it's time to sit down and watch whatever video, whoever posts on that day. And for the most part, I think that my dad, I think that Jamie, and I know myself, I think that we are very consistent, very consistent. I don't think that any of us have ever altered our schedules, um, except for that one day whenever Jamie made a little bit of a mistake and she scheduled mine for 5 p.m. instead of a.m., but that was minor. Who even remembers that? But everybody else, I, I don't know if the other creators do that. I think that they sometimes just throw them up at random and I know that hurts them. I know it hurts them. I know that you have, because I, because you don't know the schedule and I think that you want to know the schedule. Someone says you are correct about consistency. That's something that I learned as a school teacher, you know, um, that goes way back. A lot of what I do y'all, a lot of what I do, evolves around what I learned during my 25 years as a classroom teacher. And what I know for a fact are that your teachers who are consistent with the schedules, with their classroom expectations, with just kind of when they have routines in place, those teachers have very few discipline issues. It's those teachers that come in that one day will do this and one day do that and one day do that. They're the ones that struggle because they've never learned the value of being consistent. If you're consistent in your classroom, at a certain point, your kids can almost take care of themselves. You're just kind of there as the, um, the facilitator is the teacher word that you're just the moderator. You sit there and just kind of watch them do their thing. They come in, they get right to their task, they get their job done, and then you're and then you're done. Um, Y'all give me a second here. I'm going to put this guy in timeout for trying to block this user. 
Sorry about that, everybody. The naked sex guy is now blocked from this page. Um, isn't that so weird? Does he really think that someone's going to say, oh, oh, my God, naked sex. I'll go. Let me check it out. Um, anyway, um, so consistency is the key. I have preached that from day one. And uh, I think that for the most part, you appreciate that because you know that on any given day at this and this time, you find time to sit down to either have your coffee or have your tea or whatever you do. And you know that that video is going to be there waiting for you. I know that Cog Hill and Arms Family, who are the two pages that I uh, get a lot of my mentoring from these those folks mentor me they they taught me that and that we're all very consistent very consistent but uh, everyone else who just kind of flies by the seats of their pants um you never really know what to expect and i'm and i'm certain in the long run that has hurt them more than it's helped them but i've i i like i said i'm not the boss so anywho um I was going to say something else and that whole hacker got me off my game, but, um, I don't know. Anyway, as far as the baby ostrich eventually making her way over to, um, uh, arms family, that's still in the works. Um, uh, I know that DJ wanted to have a baby ostrich and it was our intentions to get her an ostrich that was still young. But my friends, I had to do the responsible thing and knowing how much our babies are struggling, watching their videos and seeing how much their babies are struggling, not knowing exactly uh, if Sue would be able to receive the same accommodations that we give her here. A lot of those things... I had to make an executive decision and just kind of slow down the process on. I had to just kind of slow down and wait until things kind of balanced out. That will give Sue a little bit more time to mature and nurture and nature um, and get her easier to adjust to change than she would have been if she were moved a month ago. Also, whenever she does make that move, she has to have grass. She has to have grass. And poor Daniel and DJ, their grass is as bad as ours. There's no grass over there, y'all. Daniel's having to let his, uh, his goats out into the woods to forage the way we're doing over here. And that's not something that an ostrich can do. thing I worry about is uh, I also know that DJ is very hands-on. She's going to want a baby who she can walk up to and put her hands on and love and pet the way she does with her donkeys. But you all know that the ostrich is not quite like that. It takes them a while to warm up to their human. They say seven months. And so I would just be terrified that the baby would get over there and it would be too much having to adjust to the heat, the travel, the differences in climate, uh, the lack of vegetation, uh, not having any of its own kind, not really being ready to bond with DJ yet. And so I just uh, think that waiting a little bit longer, at least until the fall, would be easier. Um, so I, but, but, but if DJ still wants baby Sue, then by all means, I'll be more than happy to drive her over. It's going to be a little bit different trip, though. It'll be a different kind of a trip now that she's so much bigger. <laughs> she may not fit in the uh, same carrier that we bought for her. But uh, if I have to rent a box van, I will do that. I'm not going to put Sue in a trailer. So no one needs to worry about her being in the back of a trailer for a five-hour trip all the way to Oklahoma. But uh, what I will do, if I have to, is rent one of those box vans. Those are the kind that need that has the big box. And uh, I will let Sue just pretty much have access to the back of that van and I'll drive her over. And uh, but I will talk with Daniel about that. And I promise you, as soon as we know, then you'll know. That's not something we're going to keep secret. We've talked about that from from day one. 
that it will be moving her over there if whenever they're ready and whenever we're ready whenever sue's ready we need everything to come together y'all we just need everything to come together so anyway uh, as far as her needing a partner that's not necessarily the case um we here at i'm a survivor like our animals to have a partner of their own kind not a breeding partner i mean a lot of people when they say partner they think you want to have a partner who's going to be able to get it on but that's not necessarily the case we like our animals to have a companion uh, of some sort and so if you remember carl was here for those six or seven months before we ever got any other ostriches and carl made the goat his people though the goats became his people and he began to he found his mission in life was to get up every day and make rounds with the goats and wherever the goats went carl led the way so animals are able to adjust that way so if daniel and dj uh, at some point want to go off and find her a male to have a male and female partner or another female then that would be their prerogative. But um, we just know that if you do introduce a male, they say that they'll do better with more than just one female. So I don't know exactly how that's going to work. So we haven't had to run across that yet. Carl was completely content with just Debbie. So I think it really depends on the female, if they're enough for the male to handle or not. Yeah, someone says partner equals a bestie or a buddy. And so thank you, New Leaf. I like that. Well, listen, guys, I don't really know exactly what else I can answer for you. We are never moving the alpacas to Longhorn Lester's. The alpacas need grass. And so here they have grass. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to have to ban somebody else for being weird. Block. And I'm going to block. Isn't that so weird that people would come up there and how weird. They start typing in crazy things, hoping that you'll click on those crazy things. So, all right. Well, listen, it's uh, been a while. I don't know exactly what time it is, but I know I've been on with you for a bit. Oh, no. My phone was recording in my pocket. It's one o'clock. That's my hour. Guys, today at three o'clock on YouTube, there's a questionable video coming out that I'm not worried per se. But I had to apologize to all of the new users. We're blessed that our page, uh, our Facebook especially, grows so fast. And as much as people want to hate on Facebook, Facebook is, is by far our largest platform. We're at 1.7 million people on Facebook. Can you believe that? And it was just 1.6 million a couple of months ago. But Facebook is growing so fast, which tells me that there's still plenty of people using Facebook, even for all those who don't like it. And so um, you all know that Cornholio has a bit of a foot thing. He has a thing for feet and shoes. And before you start going off and hating on Cornholio, I know that there's a lot of women out there that have closets full of shoes, a lot more than you could ever wear. So don't start hating on Cornholio. But um, yeah, uh, this is a video that it was a little bit, I was a little bit weird in making and publishing. It will come out on YouTube first. That happens today at three o'clock. And then uh, we'll see how that goes before I decide if I'll play it over on Facebook or not. <laughs> Because YouTube, I'm going to tell you all something real fast, and I'll leave you. I promise. I'll tell you one thing, then I'll leave you. We got, all right, we got 5,000 people still watching. Let me say one thing, then I will leave you. And this is not just for me. This comes from a dear friend of mine, a mentor. I will not say any names. He said his exact words this morning were, 
have I ever noticed the difference in Facebook and YouTube audiences? And I says, heck yeah. He said that one audience, excuse me, I'm trying to find the right way to say this without so not to offend anybody. He says there's one audience that is very accepting and understanding and seem to be okay with, with your content. It's a farm and on a farm, farm things happen. And then on the other platform, people only want to see old McDonald's petting zoos type farms. They only want to see an old McDonald's had a farm type farm. And in real life, if you, if you, if you really are the kind of person who wants the real, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you can't be so fast to attack somebody when they show you the real. And so in saying so, I am not worried about playing this video on YouTube whatsoever because YouTube are going to get, you may be shocked and you might be appalled and you might not be able to believe what you're watching, but it'll go over and it's going to be fine because you appreciate the fact of seeing the real. And yet there's so many people over on the other platform who are going to demand to show me the real, show me the real. I deserve it. I'm an adult, Lester. I'm an adult. I can handle it. And yet you play it and you're going to be bashed and ripped apart in the comments. I thought this was a family channel. I'll never take it. I, I'm unsubscribing from you. P.S. How do I unsubscribe anyway? <laughs> Don't think that's a joke. Don't think I'm joking. You Do you know how many people have said that? I'm unsubscribing from this channel because I'm disgusted by the content. And then the next comment is, how do I unsubscribe? You want me to help you? I don't know how to. Anyway, I think that you unsubscribe the same way you subscribe. You just click that button once to subscribe and click it again to unsubscribe. <laughs> click it once to follow and click it again to unfollow. <laughs> but uh, it's funny the way people demand and they want to know the truth. Yet there's really only pieces of the truth that they can handle. It's like the, um, oh my gosh. A few good men with was it uh, Tom Cruise and Jack, and he goes, ah, I want the truth, and Jack, you can't handle the truth, and it's true. There are some people who would love to know the truth, yet can't handle the truth. Anyway, with that being said, I can't wait for the video to come out today. There's also uh, there's also a video on Longhorn Lester's YouTube at five o'clock. I've been playing those in the afternoon to try to give the Morrow Hill gang their time in the morning. What I was seeing, and if you're wondering why I've been doing it that way, and I've talked about this a couple of times before, there's a lot of folks who are morning people who don't have time for videos and all that in the afternoons. There's other people who are afternoon people who don't have time for all that in the mornings. And so I knew that for the most part, all of the Morrow Hill creators were doing a lot of morning videos. Jake was popping his out at seven. Jamie was giving hers out at six. My dad does his at five. Um, I don't know exactly what time Kim does hers, but it was just really, really hard uh, we noticed that we, we felt like we were bottling everybody up into the mornings. And by the time the afternoons come around, um, the videos had already been four, five, six, seven, eight hours away. And it's seldom that you'll go back or be able to go back that far on your newsfeed and find the videos you wanted to watch. So what I decided to do was go ahead and just take and move my videos to the afternoons on the YouTube channels. 
And that way YouTubers would no longer be having a conflict of who do I watch today? Who do I watch? Oh my God, is it Paul Paul or Jake or Jamie or Lester? Who am I going to watch? And so we went ahead and kind of simplified that a little bit, but, um, we appreciate you guys for all that you do for us. I want to thank you again for your comments, uh, for your suggestions, for those who continue to put up with this, despite the many flaws. I, I'll never, ever stop preaching that, guys. I've lived through an experience where I lost a lot of people in my life, people who I thought would be there through the thick and the thin, who were not. They were not there when I had nothing left to offer. And so coming to you guys and seeing how many folks join the lives and hang out with me for this hour, those that watch the videos, those that give a comment and those that, you know, hit a like or share or those that email. I just hope you know that how much you're appreciated, because I know that in the world that we live in, there are thousands of channels that you can go watch animals. And there's thousands of folks that would love to have you become a part of their page and you still choose to come here. And that means something to me. And uh, I just want to say thank you. And you're appreciated. All right.